Would you mind, please, Ian, introducing yourself and describing what you do? Uh, my name is Ian Schrager. I'm uh, in the uh, uh, entertainment business and, uh, and do hotels and apartments and uh, uh, places for people to be in. Okay. And so, would you ever describe yourself as a designer or an architect or a developer? You didn't use those words just then. Uh, I never describe myself as a designer or, or an architect because I'm neither. Um, I'm really more of a producer. Uh, you know, I try to put things together and create special experiences. Uh, but uh, I really have had no training and, and, and never consider myself a designer. Your, um, your story, though, is the epitome of an American dream, right? You came from pretty humble beginnings compared to where you are now. And, uh, and then you did Studio 54, which was a massive success. And that had a little bit of a trip. And, and then you built it back up again. And you've done it twice now. You've come from, from a, a tricky, tricky, well, maybe not tricky, but a, it was a, yeah, it's the epitome of the American dream. Can you, um, can you just talk about that process, about how, how you really, yeah, how you got to where you are? So, well, well my life has been a wild ride. And uh, like holding on to a lightning bolt, uh, I really started with nothing except ambition, and I was relentless about pursuing success. And I was lucky enough, the first business I was ever in was Studio 54, and, and that really was the beginning of my lightning bolt ride. Uh, and of course, that came tumbling down. It was like a Frankenstein monster that, that Steve, my partner at the time, and I created. Uh, it almost destroyed us, uh, but my, my father has said there's taught me there's no harm in falling down. Uh, you just have to kind of dust yourself off and pick yourself up and start over again, and which is what we did. And, and, uh, and we, we, we started all over again with nothing. Couldn't get a credit card, couldn't get a driver's license. I really had nothing. And, uh, you know, we were lucky enough to, you know, go into the hotel business and, 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 and that also took off like a lightning bolt. And we, we rode that for a long time. And, and then we ran uh, head first into a really bad recession in America, and we almost lost everything again, uh, but we managed to hold on. And uh, then my good friend and, and partner Steve died, and, and uh, he was really more of the, uh, the, the, the person on the outside that everybody identified with. And I like to really be behind the scenes and create most of the work. Uh, and but we were a great partnership, and he died, and I had to take over what he did, and I had to really step outside, and 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 I'm kind of rather shy, and but I find when I talk about my work, I can really talk in front of millions of people about the work, no problem. If I'm in a cocktail party, I grab onto my wife and gravitate towards um, the corner, and um, I've I've been at it now for a while, and uh, just started a partnership with Marriott which is probably the biggest and best hotel company in the world because I wanted to do something that had a bigger footprint. I wanted to do something that was accessible to anybody and everybody who got it and, 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 and wanted to be a part of it. Uh, you know, not just people in the know and it, it, it definitely not elitist, but, but I kind of feel that, that everybody, no matter how old, no matter how rich, no matter how poor, you know, if they get it, they should be entitled to uh, participate with it, which is what I'm involved in right now. Which there's something about that that feels like a utopia, that it's not the boutique hotel that you did do that was so exclusive, but then it's not the mass market Marriott, that it's somewhere in, in the middle that you're trying to create this thing that, that, that everyone can have. Um, was, was that the goal? Was, was having this, the, not only the reach, but also the, um, the sort of real polish that you brought with Morgan Hotels, did you just want to bring it to more people? It, 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 you know, when you talk about mass market, it's kind of a, a mid-20th century idea. Uh, you know, when Steve Jobs invents Apple products, I don't think he thinks about an age group or a demographic or, 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 or a location or he was just trying to create the best product imaginable and have a big impact and, and, and change things and, and appeal to people who are teenagers and, and appeal to people who are in 70s, 80s, and 90s. That, that's the same goal I have. Uh, 
uh, it's not about making money. It, it's not about some marketing strategy. It's just about doing something really great and having a fundamental belief that if you do something really great, everybody gets it. Everybody understands it. I, I never worried about what I do being so ubiquitous that it loses what's special about it. Never. I'm a firm believer in the product, the integrity of the product. Uh, I mean, when, when, when a movie director does a blockbuster movie that isn't a cliche, but it's just a really great movie, or somebody does a great book, or somebody does a great song, the fact that many, many people love it, it doesn't mean that it doesn't have integrity and there's an artistic achievement. So no, I, I never worried about, uh, you know, people coming in and seeing something and thinking that it's less than this commitment to excellence that I've, o I've always had. I mean, and I think, you know, it's with Marriott and I've had to overcome the thought that I could be selling out. I couldn't sell out. It's not in me. Uh, but, but Marriott gives me the opportunity to do something in this, this big arena that, uh, you know, that I wanted to play in. And, but I think when you see what we're doing, you'll, you'll, all the, all the things we're doing, all the products we're doing, all the hotels, all the apartments, all the bars, all the restaurants, all the pools, whatever it is, the, the, the work won't suffer. It'll be just as good and, 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 and just as much in the pursuit of excellence as anything I've ever done before. I actually think the work I'm doing, you know, now is, is it may be the best I've, I've done, which is really great when you think about it that your current work is maybe the best and not something you've done in the past. I've, I've been lucky enough to be here for a couple of days, and so I saw when you first showed up, and what you're saying is true. I've seen you sort of walk around and move a frame or move a, a, a plant or move, you know, to make sure that your vision is here. Um, but could you maybe tell me what's, what's been the most difficult decision you've had to make with regards to addition? You know, the most difficult thing uh, in, in working with addition is that it's not an autocracy. Uh, it's a democracy. Uh, it involves compromise. It involves some committees. Uh, it, it, it involves uh, my sitting down and sometimes uh, uh, getting, you know, the biggest and most formidable hotel company in the world to, to kind of embrace and understand a little quirky idea that I might have. But it's a lot like raising children. You know, you have to kind of pick your battles. And, and if it's something very important to me, I, I, I will dig in over it. But I think that's the most difficult, you know, decision that, that, that I have to, to accomplish almost every day. If, if, if I didn't think in, in, in the selection and choice of a partner, uh, or a mate, if, if I didn't think that, that we were on the same page with what we wanted to accomplish, I, I wouldn't be able to do it. So I, I just think it's, it's taken me a while to kind of get used to in doing a project that it's not a dictatorship, it's more of a democracy. And that took some getting used to, but I am getting used to it and, and I am learning to live in, in the world of compromise. Limited compromise, but some compromise. And does that, are you, in, are you enjoying it? Are you enjoying the, the challenge of working with sort of corporate America? The, the, the enjoyment that I get is the challenge of creating something really great. You know, that people come in and, and, and they, they, their eyes get wide and, you know, they like take it in. It's like a feast for the eyes. They're really stimulated. It's better than something that came before it. It's better than anything else that they've seen. That's the payoff for me and that's the part that I enjoy. I enjoy the process of doing that, of creating that. You know, the, the, the politics and the compromises and the discussions and the meetings is not something I enjoy, but it's a kind of necessary evil that goes with the process that I can endure. But it, it's, it's the part of creating that I, I, I really enjoy. So that, that when you're done and, 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 and you've created a special place that people feel really special, it's, it's kind of a, a, you know, it's exhilarating. It's exhilarating for me. I, I'm not the kind of person that is interested in walking around a place that I just opened and, and, and getting compliments or platitudes or getting back slapped or, 
that's not the part that I enjoy. The part that I enjoy is creating something special and, and seeing people almost in some kind of uh, clandestine way, really enjoying it, really thinking it's special, or overhearing somebody saying they really think it's special. That, to me, is, is, is the part that I enjoy the most and, and keeps me going. Do you think you'd um, then ever go back and do a nightclub? Um, People must ask you that all the time. You know, I, you know, I, I'm doing nightclubs now, micro clubs. Uh, you know, the, the, the reason I, I, a friend of mine owns a serious radio station, and he there's a Studio 54 radio station, and he asked me to do a one night only party, and because he's my friend, I agreed to. I took my kids there, my my daughters, my oldest daughter was 20, and and when they went in there, and I saw them going, and couldn't believe it, I thought, you know, it's time to do something. You know, like this or that. I'll do I'll do nightclubs in the context uh, of a hotel if it makes a hotel better and if it's part of a bigger idea. But um, just to do a nightclub again, no, I uh, been there, done that. Uh, I'm interested in doing other things. I think it's um, that's especially interesting in the in the context of Steve Jobs, right? Who's renowned for his sort of graveyard business model. You know, when Walkmans were all but null and void, he was like, aha, let's make a personal music player, the iPod. He's done the, the same thing. He did the same thing with uh, smartphones, um, Apple, iPads. iPads, right? I mean, it, it goes on and on. And he has this amazing graveyard, or he had, and the legacy he's left behind is this graveyard um, business model. Do you, do you think that you do a bit of that, that you look at a space that is, I mean, nightclubs in New York when you did Studio 54, hotels when you did hotels. I mean, you every time have gone in and really shaken up what we expect of these places. Do you, when you're thinking about what's next, are you thinking about where can I change and shift a, a space of entertainment? Every time I do something, it's because I want to be disruptive. Uh, you know, I want to, you know, make a contribution, rethink, reinvent things, take them to a new place. I mean, that's the only reason to make me get up in the morning. Um, if, when I feel I don't have a contribution to make, when I don't feel I have anything new to offer, when I feel I'm replicating something I've done before or doing it in a different color, that's when I would stop. That, that's when I you know, wouldn't be interested in doing it anymore. I think that's the whole point of it, you know, going in and upsetting the status quo. Um, that, that, to me, is what turns me on. And it's not just about doing hotels. It's certainly not about making money. You can't get the drive just from that. It has to come from something else. And it's it's that idea of going in, upsetting the status quo, taking people, pointing them in a new direction, and changing things and having an impact on things. I think that's what interests a lot of creative people. I think that's what certainly interested uh Steve Jobs and, and a lot of other creative people. That's the kind of motor that 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 makes those things happen. I think you you definitely support that with um, each edition. You're using a different architect, really. Um, you're collaborating where you can in completely different ways. I mean, this edition feels totally different than the London edition. Um, how do you come about? How do you decide who you are going to work with? You know, when I decide uh, people to work with, it's a little bit of a different selection and working with Marriott. Um, you know, I have to choose people that are very professional because I don't think that Marriott would be able to tolerate a kind of very messy, creative process that, you know, I've done before and in the past. I mean, I used to get, you know, when I would work with some of the creative people that I've worked with in the past, I, I would get plans on toilet paper. I mean, it was just very unprofessional, but it was really creative. So now I have to choose people because we want to do something in a big volume that won't hold me back. And so instead of taking somebody very, very creative and, and trying to put an infrastructure around them, now I have to choose people that are also creative but very professional and push them uh, so that I can turn out the product, which is it's fine. It's just it's a little bit of a different approach, but I always get to the same place. I, it has to be something great, and 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 that I'm proud of of, of doing. 
But but I but I think the notion on an intellectual basis, if if I we would like to do a hundred or two hundred of these hotels, uh, all different, uh, same ethos, same attitude, you know, same umbilical cord connecting them all, but but all different. The only way you're going to be able to do that is is is, is a you you're in a different physical plant, b you're in a different city. And C, you work with a different designer. You're going to get a different look for every hotel by, by definition. And, and, and then what you wind up with is a collection of hotels that have a similar attitude, have the same name, and have nothing else in common. They all look different, but they make the people who are there feel the same. They're in the same kind of, you know, special place. And, and, and when we did the edition in London, we wanted it to feel like a hotel that was in London. And when we do, we just opened up an edition in Miami Beach. We want it to feel like you're in Miami Beach, not like you're in London, or else, what's the point? And so, and and that again is is part of the process that I'm interested in. And I'm particularly interested just in quickly talking about John Paulson, um, because he's known for his minimalist, clean designs. Um, and I know he didn't work, he worked on the residences and not on the, the main lobby or the, the rooms. But did he struggle at all with um, with being not doing some of the stuff downstairs or in the public spaces, or was he fine with it? No, you know, when we put together a team of people, because all we care about is the success of the project, we care about nothing else. We don't care about credit. Because what's the point of taking the credit in something that isn't so successful? So I'm able to convey this notion that we're all part of a team, and if the tide comes in, and it becomes a high tide and lifts the boat, we all benefit from it. So we just all have to kind of participate, and we all have to share in the credit if it's very, very successful, which is better than taking all the credit for something not so successful. And everybody buys off into that because there's a kind of integrity uh, about it, you know, for me. I think working with John Pawson is a perfect example of the process that I'm talking about because he is a minimalist. And I went to him and said, I don't want minimalism. And I know you're the minimalist, you know, but I want something really simple, really pared down, really pure. I, I, I don't want any superfluous gestures. I don't want anything decorative. You know, and, 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 and I want you to do a person's apartment because when you do a person's apartment, their personality is what's supposed to come out, not my personality. And I think you are there to provide the perfect envelope that can take the personality of the person that buys that apartment, you know, by, by, by having great layout, by having a great level of finishes that is kind of, you know, reconcilable with Baroque or minimalist or deco or, or whatever it is that the buyer wants, great light, the things that great architects really work with. But I wasn't interested in, in a look, a minimalist look. That I'm not, I mean, to me, if, if you do something and somebody can come in and say, I put a label on it, you failed. You know, you're supposed to come in and, and do something that can't be labeled, can't be placed in a certain time. It's a, it's a kind of timeless thing, and and John w was able to do that, and that's why we chose him, and 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 and, and I think it turned out really great. And you've worked with him a couple times. I mean, your house in New York is. I I, I work with John a few times. First of all, because he's such a lovely guy, uh, and and um, I'm cr I'm crazy about him as a man. I mean, he's a he's a real gentleman. He's easy to get along with, and and um, you know when I push. I push, and, uh, and he's he's up for that, uh, and 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 um, and I will continue to work with them. We're, we're doing a hotel with John in, in in West Hollywood now, as well. But again, it's not going to be a minimalist hotel. It, it's going to be a hotel really simple and really pure, and and warm and gracious and inviting. Those are the labels that I want used to describe the, his work, not minimalism. Were, were people were shocked that you two got paired together? I mean, your your hotels are um, these uh, they're sort of these massive places where people come together. That's what you're known for. Um, lobbies filled with with fantastic people doing fun things. John, as you've said, is is known for this pared down aesthetic, um, sort of calm, contemplative 
spaces. Were, were people shocked when you said, I want to do this with John? Uh, no, people people weren't shocked when I decided to do do this with John because I think that if a space is pared down uh, uh, and and is calm, people will react better to it and 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 have more fun with it, provided it's sophisticated and and has that kind of special ethos and 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 feel about it. That the vocabulary, you know. You know, we work with. It's so funny. I tell people, this place is not about design, and and they always react. Oh, come on! This place is designed within an inch of itself. No, it's 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 it, it's not about design. It's about, you know, the design for me is like the special effects in a movie. They make a a, a good movie better, but they don't make a bad movie good. Uh, you know, they, so you know, to me, you have to have a basic, fundamental idea or the direction that you're moving in, and if you have a good design, it kind of enhances that. So, no, I, I, and and I, I think working with John is also. I have this notion that when we started being so sensitive to design, I've again created a Frankenstein monster because everybody realizes that good design is good business, and now you have a lot of banal versions of what we started to do. And so, and I think, I call it design on steroids, and I think there's a backlash against it. I think people are kind of tired of it. Uh, it's almost like when there was a bunch of banal glass boxes after Mies van der Rohe did his great masterpiece, there were a lot of bad versions that came after it. So I think we're kind of rejecting that and going to something really simple, edited and pared down, not minimalist, but, but simple, um, I, I think that's what people want now. I, I love that idea. Um, how how then though do you start? Like where do you s start? If these are all huge ideas, but where where what do you what do you, you walk into a meeting with with John or with Marriott? Where what's the first thing you say? Well, you know, when we walk into a meeting with um, with John or another great architect to design, we come in with a fairly cooked program of how we see the space working. Um, and and then it's up to the designer to kind of put the special effects and, and, and give life to those ideas and to make the space flow and, and, and the level of finishes and the details. But the program of, of, of creating uh, an environment is not start with design. It starts with like social scientism. Uh, coming up with what people, what you think will enhance a person's time in that space. And then you give that idea um, to the designer and you start collaborating on it to, 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 to bring it to life. But it doesn't start with the design. It ends with the, it, it ends with the design. What do you, what do you think's next for you? You know, I still love doing hotels and, and, um, you know, I still enjoy doing it. Um, we opened the edition in Miami last night, and I I get just as turned on as I did when I I did my first first nightclub. You know, I I, I kind of like this idea with hotels, where we, we where we kind of introduce this notion that a hotel should manifest something of the social fabric of the city that it's in, and that took primarily a nighttime experience. I like this idea of kind of extending that into the day. I like this idea of, of, of doing a businessman's hotel, but rejecting these traditional ideas of meeting spaces and meeting rooms and, you know, in this era when people travel around with, with their own technology and you don't really need offices and they network and there's a blurring of the distinction between a personal life and a business life. I kind of think there's a place for a, a new hotel in in that mix, which is is is, is what we're playing around with um, right now. And I like doing residential as well. I mean, it's so funny in a residence, the work is over when you finish building it. With a hotel, the work starts uh, when you finish building it. Uh, you know, so there are differences, but there there are kind of similarities. And I still I love it. I still. Have a passion for it and enthusiasm. Same passion and enthusiasm I always have. Hasn't haven't lost a, a bit. Same enthusiasm.
there's also a sheer determination. You know, we've, we've been talking this week about why, why would you open this week of all weeks? You know, you have the most creative, most critical people in the world here because of Basel. So the, the determination of saying, no, 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 my hotel can stack up. We can do this. We can open to 3,000 people this week. It seems an interesting decision. So funny. I think uh, if, if, if people ask, you know, what is one of the characteristics that makes something uh, successful? It, it, it's 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 det determination, but it's 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 determination that really becomes a relentlessness uh, to uh, just uh, make it perfect and, and 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 make it ready for the for the best people, the most sophisticated people. You know, people who are really in the know and really want to be a part of the zeitgeist really do something, you know, that, that resonates with those people. Because if it resonates with those people, it will resonate with everybody. And so that's one of the reasons that it was um, fun for us to, to get ready for our puzzle. When really the best people in the world are sent upon my Miami. And it was just fun to be a part of that. On that note, I'll probably ask you one more question which is, what, what would you say to a young Ian Schrager? What would you say to yourself if you, if you had to start it all over again? What, what advice would you give yourself? You know, I would, uh, you, know, you know, tell my kids and tell any young person, because I feel obliged to give back, you don't be afraid of failure. Uh, and don't be afraid to pursue your dream. And definitely be relentless uh, uh, about it. I mean, if, if, if uh, I mean, I, I know a friend of mine has a, uh, a, a, a cushion on their um, couch that says no guts, no glory, and 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 I think don't be afraid of failure. I mean, if if you if you're not going to risk failure, you're never going to do anything that's going to be worthwhile or or disruptive, and 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 you can't be afraid of that. You know, that to me is the single most important tenet for any entrepreneur. Uh, and 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 once you've gotten over that hurdle. I think the next most important thing is to be relentless in pursuit of your dream and, and, and stop at nothing. Uh, uh, you know, when you open or when you finish what you've done, you know, you know, be comfortable that you've done every single thing humanly possible. There's nothing more you could possibly do to make it work better than it is. And, and I think if you can follow those two tenets, then you're going to be successful. And exhausted. Pardon me? And exhausted. And exhausted. Exactly. On that note, thank you. That was great. Thank you very much.